Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Oh, my God. Guys, seriously, who posted the video? It wasn't me. Well, one of us did. Hello, Internet. Today is March 17th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TV, things we watch in front of screens in our faces. I'm Malango at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. How's it going, Sorg? Here I am, ready to talk uh, movies. Uh, which show is this? What's happening? <laughs> Back to you, Malango. Yeah. Uh, we also have... Ashley, how's it going, Ashley? Good, glad to be back. Yeah, you had yeah. nice sun down in Florida, right? I did. Yes, it was oh. amazing. Oh, you need to get out more. Well, welcome <laughs> back to our forty-five degree weather <laughs> in uh, cloudy Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Appreciate the warm welcome. Speaking <laughs> of of clouds, hey, New York, bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Just I- go with it. I was I was gonna do it. I was gonna do an awful Irish accent to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day, but now apparently there's a there's a huge cloud ray over my head. But go to Pagora, it's good to see a Malango. I guess it's just Pittsburgh oh, no. that gets that rep for very cloudy, right? Uh, New York's usually pretty uh Seattle. Oh uh, yeah, Seattle, I guess uh eh, whatever. I think they kinda- So hey. Okay. What were you going to say, Mike? I, say, I think they kind of get the same weather, but I don't want to be a podcast that talks about the weather because we're talking about movies, Blango. What are we talking about? What's the trailer? We are talking about movies. So the trailer of this week, Unfriended, this happy gem of a of a horrible idea <laughs> that somebody decided to do. So, yeah, you guys saw this trailer. I, I was going to read the, the synopsis, and I, it's not even worthy of that. If you're on audio, <laughs> they are, yes, those sounds are familiar. I'm sure they'll be in the trailer, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's basically the entire movie's on Skype. So it's the horror movie version of what you expect from uh, the Modern Family episode that was all I chat <laughs> and FaceTime. It's uh, yeah, uh, interesting concept. Nice, nice twist on the Blair Witch ish concept with new technology. And um, I, I also, don't... also a nice choice on the bullying angle that a lot of movies are doing. Now. That's true too. Yeah. That's true too. I guess there's a little bit of angle of uh, did somebody somebody died or uh, committed suicide, and uh, now she's talking to them through the screen. Right, and everybody and killing and, and killing, killing via fun. Skype. It's Google freak out. I hope they do make it like a supernatural force and not just like her dad. <laughs> 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 uh, based on the trailer, it doesn't look like a father can really hack into a Google Hangout. I don't know. Maybe he's like an IT dude or something. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe he's Bill Gates. Like her third cousin removed and that's revenge. That's right. That's right. And I, for some reason, it's David Arquette. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's wearing a banana suit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went random. Malengo one up me on the random. That's right. I'm very pleased with that. David Arquette in a banana suit show, sort show title. I gotta say, when they did the reveal at the end and it just like faded in unfriended, I'm like, I was howling when I first saw this trailer. Yes. Um, and uh-huh. this, this isn't a brand new trailer. It's been out for a few, maybe a month or so. Um, but uh, I, I love the concept. I'm not. I don't I, give a crap about this movie. But you, I, I think I'm gonna see this when it hits my two dollar. When, when it hits my Netflix, I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of, kind of see. I want to see how they did it. Like, I want to see technically how they did this thing mm-hmm. and kept it interesting. You know, much like the Blair Witch thing, right? And we've seen that so many times with found, found footage uh, movies, mm-hmm. and it's always to me kind of a technical thing, you know. Um, but uh, no, I'm looking forward to that side. Ashley, compared to uh, It Follows, the other trailer, <laughs> which, which one? Because uh, you are our resident horror movie. I do uh, like a good lover horror of movie. Chicks. Yes, I do like uh, a good horror movie. Yeah, which one? Which one? The are which one would you go see? Oh, It Follows. It follows. Absolutely, 
I mean, um, what's the concept for It Falls for those that haven't seen it, including our, our well, co I, I, haven't, here. I haven't seen it. I just saw the trailer. Um, I mean, the trailer. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, the trailer. Yeah, of course. Something um, follows you. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, no, there's. No, that's, that's literally the concept I was able to grasp from the there's, trailer. Yeah, there's a curse that is passed Spoiler on. Alert. Like, you basically, if you're given this curse, you can pass it on to somebody else. By having sex with that person. <laughs> I didn't just say. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, Where I told you. That? I told you. I, it, no, it says it in there. It's only uh, through. It's sex. just. Yeah. So it's there's like, a ghost STD. <laughs> it's like such a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have sex with you if you were my worst enemy. Unless. That's the only way you could pass the curse on to somebody else. And if that oh person is not able God. to have sex with somebody, then you die. This and, then, is... and then it keeps going back down the line and, until it no. gets to the person who started it. This is a fantastic is, is advertisement the for Is called the like, chlamydia yes. or something? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. It's exactly. got to be something. Exactly. Oh, man. That's... Do not have sex, I... kids. <laughs> <laughs> don't have sex with Ever. anyone Ever. because something could follow you for the you rest of know. your life. You never know. No, but, were, were, you just were you surprised at that little reveal? Yes. <laughs> like I didn't grasp that from the trailer at all. Yeah. I yeah. just, I'm, I'm just like, oh, it follows and it passes no. along. But they didn't really say. It, yeah. Like that's it's, the that's the go home point for me. Um, now wait, is this a, is this a Christian movie? Was it was this done by um uh oh don't say Kirk Hammer. Kirk, I was going to say Kirk Cameron. <laughs> Is this Kirk Cameron's horror debut? Don't have sex, kids. It follows you. And if one person dies, everyone else you've ever had sex with dies. <laughs> wow. All right, now everybody right. has to go rewatch the trailer just so now I kind of crazy. See it with new eyes. Too. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With a new perspective. It follows. <laughs> so I think we figured out what we're going to watch. Yes. Instead of oh, unfriended. So, Malenga, what did everybody watch over the weekend? <laughs> uh oh. Oh no, we lost them. Oh no. Come oh back. no. Come back. I'm back. Okay. But you know, spoiler alert, Cinderella. You didn't want to hear bitches. what we were saying. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so Disney walked away with this one. Pulling in like 67, 68 million. The next runner up was literally run all night. <laughs> Uh, good old Liam Nelson. Uh, only pulled in about eleven million. Yeah, that uh, that Cinderella with the glass slippers and stuff. Uh, it has nothing to do with glass slippers, Malengo. Do you know what it has to do with mm. making snowmen? That's what it has to do with. No, there are not. You want to watch them frozen? There were not sixty-eight million dollars worth of parents. Pulling their kids in to see no, a no. trailer. For... No, I believe it. No, I believe it. I no, completely believe really? it. Really? No. Seriously. Oh. It's that crazy. Malengo, um, I was in the theater to see Cinderella. <laughs> How many left after the teaser? A lot. No, <laughs> no, no. Seriously? Uh, is, is that serious? No, um, no, no. They didn't leave it because the movie was actually good. But, I'm, um, I'm but yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you, the Frozen thing, huge draw. Mm hmm. Huge. What? Like that was that was all I heard people talking about walking into it. I have a confession. I've yet to see Frozen. Uh, in the oh same boat. Gosh. In the same boat. You've never you haven't seen never it. Haven't either? seen it. Oh, thank you. Oh, At least Ashley, I know I'm not the only this person. What? Here to, here to, oh, here another movie this. challenge. Yes. Okay. Well, we have to think of one for you. Yes. Actually, I actually with Frozen, Mike. I don't know if I or Sorg. I don't know if I told you this one, but I skipped. Well, the first time I watched it through, but my recommendation for Frozen was to skip until you see a snowman called Olive, because that's when the movie gets good. Uh, hmm. That's a lie. That's hmm. a lie. <laughs> the snowman is How the far only is that good into part the movie? of that movie. How far is that's that into lie. the movie? Like 30 minutes in. All right. This is a lie. This is a lie. Do not like do that. One of the most endearing songs is right at the beginning of the movie. Is this like the inverse Sorry, okay. where I was really into uh, Peabody and Sherman for like the first 20 minutes and just didn't care anymore and started doing something else? No, <laughs> actually, I would say it's the reverse. Because unlike some people, Mad Mike, he actually liked the movie. But it then brings other people, me, back into it when the snowman shows up. Okay, so... It Watch it with the kid, and the snowman is your is your connection to this. All of the humor begins when the snowman shows up. 
And that is an outright gets better. lie. That is an outright lie. But it only okay. gets better. So, so basically, in the long run, what we're what we're learning is Malengo is here for the humor. Mad Mike is here for the songs. <laughs> uh, there is also humor before Olaf. Uh, the best song is "I Want to Be a Snowman." That's not even a song in the movie. Yes, it is. No, How it's not. <laughs> there's there's a song called "Do You Want to Build a Snowman," which oh is at the gosh. beginning of the movie. If you watch I hope, it, I Malengo, hope Malengo, another Blizzard. My girlfriend children, sings children. the Under. songs of Frozen to me every <laughs> single day. Oh, that was... <laughs> there is no song called "I Want to Be a Snowman." I All right. Song too. called so, in so summer. Moving on. The uh, the uh, is that a good or bad? This song? is a very animated uh, podcast wow. today. I love it. <laughs> Malengo, Malengo, Very passionate. there is no song called <laughs> I Want to Be a Snowman. You were thinking of I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Oh, what? oh my gosh. I will find the song. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. No, you will not, Box you will office. Not find the song. Enough with the fine. frozen uh, uh, flashback here. Uh, but, but Mad Mike, he's our historian. So <laughs> Frozen fever. Oh, man. All right. So for everybody that only watches BBC or B. PBC what? for Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> PBC? Yes, the public broadcasting station. Oh, well, PBS. That's I don't PBS. know anyone who watches things like that. <laughs> uh, I don't geez. know anyone you... who watches BBC America at like, all. Are, are you okay? Actually, there's a dog barking at me. So yeah, yeah, we got a little bit of a visitor around. here. Um, but go ahead. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is getting a fourth season. I am very excited about this. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is returning. Same with Martin Freeman as Watson. Um, I wish it was coming out tomorrow, but it is not. Do, uh, have you, any of you guys seen the Sherlock series? I love the Sherlock series, and I love. I, you're missing the big thing for this. They're going to actually uh, for the for their special um, go back to Victorian times for this. Yeah, I don't know that I. I just, I'm just more glad that it's coming back. How, how did they go back to Victorian times? Does Sherlock have a TARDIS? It's just one of those special episodes where it's like, yeah, we're 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 just gonna be in this time, you know, like the musical episodes of of other series. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. I see BBC America. I see time travel. I, I think of one thing, Doctor Who. <laughs> and coincidentally, it's done by the same dude. So. That would be an amazing crossover. Yes. Um. Yes, I lost track because I'm thinking of something else. Thank you, Mad Mike. Hey, uh, Mallrat <laughs> sequel. <laughs> yeah, Mallrat sequel. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, so excited. how excited are you guys for this? Ashley, are you excited about a mall right? Um, I can't talk. A mall rat sequel. I'll be all. honest. I've never seen the original. <gasps> Oh I've heard, I've heard of a challenge for next week. All right, I have two. Yes. I have Frozen and Mallrats. Kevin Smith is not doing anything because he doesn't listen to this podcast. But yes, um, I don't know. I don't think I care. I think I'll watch it, but I don't think I care. I'm Mall sorry, I'm not a hardcore fan. But yes, for you Mall fans out there, Mallrats was the first one of his movies that I actually saw. Uh, that was how it hooked me in, and then I found Clerks and Chasing Amy and all that stuff. So I'm super excited about Mallrats too. Um, I'm not disappointed that he's going back to the well because he's obviously done Clerks two and is going to do Clerks three. But uh, it should be interesting to see, like, because uh, I don't know if he's going to have all the same characters from Mallrats because Shannon Doherty, uh, Jeremy London, I don't even know if he's still alive. So who knows? <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what's happening with T.S. and Brody. I just hope they get Michael Rooker in and he makes a joke about an Infinity Stone. That's all I'm hoping for. Like uh, they had a poll on um, Empire Online of which Kevin Smith sequel you would rather watch if it weren't if it were between uh, Mallrats two, Dogma two. I think that would be interesting. Chase, uh, Chasing Amy two. Um, Jay and Silent Ball, Revenge of the Cockmocker, and uh, Red State to Blue State. Eh. No, uh, Red State. Red State was really good. If you haven't seen, Ashley, have you seen Red State? It's a horror movie that he did. No, I have not. 
That's What's a really good flick. It's on Netflix. You oh, like yeah? it? It's about like a, a cult. Oh, and yeah, uh, yeah it's it's pretty good. It's, it, it's, it's got John it's Goodman in it. Uh, I love him. Um, speaking of cults, has anyone ever seen Martha Marcy May Marlene? Martha Marcy May Marlene. <laughs> Say it again. That sounds fast. <laughs> Martha Marcy May Marlene <laughs> with um, Elizabeth Olsen. That's a really good cult movie. Actually, Just, I think I. I think I, I, seen that uh, I think she was almost nominated for an Academy Award for that. It's it's good. It's it's a very good cult movie. Thank you, Auto Complete, for this one. <laughs> I am totally going to make you pick the movie this Halloween. Me? Because I have a feeling oh, yeah. that I will be crying. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, Ooh, yeah, so he's been... Well, when he's supposed to be in this uh, Canadian trilogy, so I guess he's looking for the, the next thing. Um, he, he went to this, like, F Hollywood thing to this, yeah, let's go back to the well for, like, everything. Which I think is smart for him for something like that, you know? He, he's kind of stretched his wings, and, and now he's kind of back to, you know, what kind of made him famous. And, and those fans are, want that stuff. So and, It's and, also uh, conveniently time for the 20th anniversary of Mall Rats. That's true, nice. too. That's true, too. I, I was going through my DVDs as we were moving stuff from the living room over the weekend. I forgot I have two copies of almost every one of his movies. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have the special edition for half of them. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward to that, for sure. I, I'll be curious to see what they do. I, I mean, it was a little weird when they did Clerks 2, and it wasn't in black and white, and it wasn't an indie movie, and we had, like, two of the people from the first one. You know, but... I, I, but I had like Rosary Dawson and I thought it was hilarious. I just hope Willem saw the sailboat. Oh, that needs to be closed. Like up too. I, I hope we like it said at the end of Mall Rats that Willem eventually saw the sailboat. So we need if they to get have... him because he's doing a lot of stuff and, and Jason Lee's doing a lot of stuff. They get both of them on. They have to have some kind of uh, my name is Earl reference too. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> like Willem can just be really confused and call Brody Earl, and he can just hit him like Shan Doherty did for Brenda. Nice, yeah. Like that should be the exact. That should be the only joke in it for Willem and Brody. That should be it. Don't and Brody just hits him and calls him a dick and walks away. <laughs> maybe like maybe Brody has a list for some reason. And sorry, my, uh, Blango. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so Rotten Tomato uh, put out a a list of eight TV shows that we should binge watch this month. I saw this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this real quick and. Okay. Tell me which ones you guys have not watched. Uh, Mad Men, 96 on Ron Tomato. That's I've never good. seen, never of- seen Mad Men. Never yep, seen. I, I I saw the first two episodes, um, and I realized I don't like the period piece aspect of it because I thought it was really really upsetting for women, and I that that bothered me. It bothered me on a very primal level. Like Man. it was very good getting writing, deep, very good acting, deep. but Mad mm-hmm. Mike's sticking enough for the ladies. Look Thank at that. you. I, I I couldn't watch it. Getting deep there. I love it. Yeah. I saw Game of Thrones on there. That is my life. Mm-hmm. Just saying, April 12th. <laughs> yes. No one expected um, I saw it. Disney's Game of Thrones, and I've also seen regular Game of Thrones. So, yeah. Disney's Game of Thrones. Yes, I will get into it in what I watched. Okay. Ah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Gotham. I don't know if I'm actually caught up with Gotham. but Do not I- binge watch Gotham. I would say you could binge watch Gotham. Binge That's okay. watch Arrow. Binge watch Flash. Those are better shows than Gotham. Hater. Yeah, I thought we established uh, this already. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying, Ashley? I didn't hear something. All right, Outlander. I heard the <laughs> book is amazing. Sorry. We're back. Never seen it. You never saw Okay, yeah. No, so I heard, I heard the book for Outlander is like ridiculously good. So, and then I've heard a lot of good stuff about the show. Um, it looks like, uh, based on this quick story, uh, it, it ties in mid or not medieval, a uh, married World War II nurse finds herself mysteriously transported back in time to 1743, with, <laughs> where she meets an irresistible Scottish warrior. I don't necessarily know if that's a show that I would watch, but I hear good things. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like a really odd mashup of Quantum Leap and Highlander. Mm, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Marvel's, Marvel's Agent Carter has a 97%. Yeah, it, I have to finish the series. It's a nice quick watch, too. It ties up nicely. Yeah, it, I think it's like eight episodes. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Very concise, yeah, no filler. 
mm-hmm. all killer, no filler. Like it's 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 essentially watching a really long Marvel movie, but it's really really good. Here's one that I don't think any of us have heard of: The Returned. It's a it's French now- TV series. No, no. Um, no. Yeah. It says it's on Netflix. That's interesting. Right now, it's uh, it's rocking a one hundred percent on mm. Rotten Tomato. Be- that seems interesting because only French people have seen it and reported on it. This is true. Ah. Here's here's the two that I'm pretty excited about. So I started watching the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yes. Um, that I I am enjoying that. I did hear some stuff on another podcast that I listened to, where apparently what this podcast was is that? I wonder what you're going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was slated for television, but when it did not go to television and Netflix picked it up, they had to dump stuff back into the show mm-hmm. that was originally pulled out because of TV. Well, it, 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 well, the interesting thing, because I know we listen to the same podcast, Core Killers. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> plug people, man. Uh, but uh, apparently they thought they were going to still be on NBC or something, and they edited it for TV with 22 minutes and, and, and ad breaks and everything and transitions, right? And then after that, they're just like, yeah, we can leave more stuff in. So I guess like I guess the times jump at that point. Yeah. And well, here's the crazy thing. Mike, how, ma- how many episodes have you watched, or did you finish it already? I saw the whole thing. You saw, oh. I saw it all. It's amazing. Definitely a binge watch. It took I, me like two days. I saw like uh, I saw like th- four or five episodes. The problem was that my wife didn't want to watch more than one at a time because <laughs> of the tone of the show, um, which I get. Uh, but we got into a little nice little binge yesterday, so um, it, it's it's fun. It, you can tell it's kind of a Thirty Rock kind of feel to it too. See, so. here's here's my thing with it. Like I thought it was funny. My wife did not think it was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But besides that, like... But even 30 Rock wasn't for everybody either. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But seeing this show on Netflix, I thought it it fit a lot better. If I had seen this on NBC, it would not have been funny. Like this oh, NBC been like canceled this three episodes in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I hear, and, and that's the thing, like Court Killers uh, said that this gets even better on episode seven because that's yes. when they like found themselves. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, well, and by the it way, starts off, it started off a little rough, like with yeah. just with the subject material and everything like that, because basically it's women who were held in a bunker and kidnapped for a while, which, given what I just said about Mad Men, doesn't seem like it would work. <laughs> but the kind fact that they were kidnapped when they were 14 and it doesn't seem like that they were sexually abused or anything like that. Like, it doesn't see it just no. seems like. But they're they, being held captive. They still allude to it a little bit, though. They're, they're like, they're like, yes, there was funky sex stuff, and and but then they don't go back to it. Uh, yeah. yes, watch the rest of it. it. Okay. They don't really get into that it involved the preacher. Right, right, right. They, they, I think it's yeah. that's the intention I picked up on too. Right. Yeah, I mean, but and honestly, it, I think it's because the fact that they're so childlike for mm-hmm. the most part, when they come out of the bunker, that it kind of negates it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because, like, they haven't really been able to fully process it, essentially. Yeah. The, there is one negative I'll say. I don't rem- I think her name was Erin on, on The Office. I don't like when character roles, like, almost, like, parallel from previous shows. But at that same note, her facial expressions are freaking hilarious. Yes. So, I'll go with it. She's really good at this. At least there's like a reason for her to be naive in this one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and she and she loses that probably about halfway in. Okay. <laughs> probably about and plus when she does like it's like she still is very outwardly sunshiny like a Brady, but uh, you can tell New York hardens her a little bit, which is good. Nice. Yeah, the the last show on the on this list, real quick, that I'm pretty excited about, and that's because he used to control a TARDIS, is uh, the Escape Artist mm. uh, from the same people that brought us Sherlock Holmes. Um, it is from the Masterpiece Mysteries. Uh, David Ten- Tennant. Tennant. Yeah. Tennant. Uh, Tennant. David Tennant. Tennant. Uh, I love this guy. He is an awesome actor. If you haven't seen uh, Broadchurch. Both versions, the American and the British one, I think they're both good, even though it's kind of weird that he tries to fake an accent. Uh, <laughs> but 
yes, I also recommend that. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one, but that no. sounds interesting. Because I love David Tennant, and I can't wait for him in uh, AKA Jessica Jones. That's coming out later this year. So, so, um, so, just clarify something for me. The preview that, or the Frozen thing that you saw, was that a short, or was that like the trailer for the sequel? Oh, it was a short. It was, it was a, a short. short. It was independent. Yeah. yeah, it's completely independent. It had all the same characters, but it's it was um. Just a little anime piece about Anna's birthday party. Okay. So um, how much, like how long was it? Just like. Uh, it was about eight to ten minutes, something like that. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, the, Disney's been doing a lot of like the animated shorts in front of their, like all the recent movies that have come out. And they've all been really, really yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Like I remember the. Uh, I liked Feast. The, Mm-hmm. You see like Feast, Feast yes. was amazing. I yeah. loved Feast Impress- a lot. Um, there was also a Mickey Mouse old school one. I forget mm-hmm. what the name of it was, but it was in front of Frozen. Press- where it was uh, like Mickey Mouse and the old like Clarabelle characters. It was good. Presto mm-hmm. before Wally is my favorite of all. Yes, time. Presto's really uh- good too. <laughs> Presto looked like to me what Disney would do if they had the rights to Bugs Bunny. Oh yeah, <laughs> I concur. Yeah, so uh, for Frozen 2, you guys were just going to have to wait about, I don't know, three more years. Uh, but, yeah, it's definitely slated. Uh, basically, this article states, when a movie makes $1.27 billion, there will be a sequel. Mm-hmm. Or five. Or five. <laughs> and TV shows and all kinds of stuff. That's the good uh, thing about the animation. The actors don't age. That's kind of a, that's kind of the model, isn't it? <clears throat> I mean, uh, the big thing about uh, Pixar was like they, they looked around to all the characters in the parks and they're like, yeah, these aren't our characters. We should probably buy these guys. Um, anyway, they own the properties, of course, by, by, by you know, doing doing stuff with them but they're like you know these guys are generating our next properties for a sell and they're they're a money making machine so that's that's the point of it so um so of course you're going to see that with something successful like this is why you don't see the princess and the frog sequels and everything all over the place yeah that's true all right so uh mad mike or not mad mike Hmm. sorg sorg what i do (laughs) i'm going to plug the round table Oh. What is the round table? The round table is where we review trailers. We get a bunch of people together. We go watch a movie, and then we instantly go and review that movie. As to not be, I don't know, convoluted with other ideas in our heads <laughs> to later come back and say, no, that movie did suck, or yes, that movie was amazing, and and we just do it. You want the raw and authentic feeling yeah. from that movie in these podcasts is what you're telling me. That's what I'm saying. Amen. So we're <laughs> preach it out. Yeah, preach. <laughs> uh, so yes, we want, my... so the roundtable is essentially full nerd rage about a movie as soon as it's finished. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Full of spoilers was... as well. I think we it's had a not... I think we had a good one to start it. Yeah, right, we did. Uh, yeah. You're gonna play an excerpt? We did have a good one to start it off. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, people can find that on our site, Time to Ramble. Dot com, and it's under the Rambling Movie Minute tab. If you just scroll down, uh, you'll see it there. All right. So back to what we're watching or what we watched or what we're very excited about. All of that encompassed in this nice little umbrella. Mad Mike, you yeah. saw stuff. I saw Cinderella, as I've mentioned several times. Um, uh, first, I'll talk about the Frozen Shore a little bit. Uh, it was very funny. A uh, couple really good laugh out loud moments. Um, had a nice song in it, which was the song kind of encompassed most of the short, like with a few bits thrown in there. Um, they had a nice callback to uh, the villain of Frozen, which is really good. Uh, there, there was a lot of really good stuff in it, and I could see why they want to make a Frozen too, based on uh, how much of a rich like character arc you can still have from these characters. Like, uh, the relationship of Elsa and Anna was still really good. Um, uh, Kristoff, Sven was kind of, they're kind of like throwaway characters in this a little bit. And Olaf was prevalent as he always is. 
so you'll be happy with it, Malenka. But uh, Cinderella was actually really enjoyable. I liked it a lot. Uh, I didn't know exactly what to expect, especially when they first start off the movie by calling the lead character Ella instead of Cinderella. Huh. Um, she eventually <laughs> gets that name, but it, it's um, it was a very uh, it was well acted. Um, Kate Blanchett plays the wicked stepmother, and she is fantastically evil. Just <laughs> is there a darker really, tone really, to it? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, Darn. like there's a few <laughs> things here and there, but I actually I think the original cartoon was a little bit darker than this. Mm. Like well, it, they all it are. was light. It was light and airy, um, but it still had some depth to it. Like they tried to ground it a little bit more. Like why the wicked stepmother was such a bitch, uh, you know, a few moments thrown in here and there, and you see Cinderella before the wicked stepmother came into her life, which is a nice uh, backstory to her. You can see kind of why she is not okay with being subservient, but why she does it, and uh, you get more into the backstory of the prince too. Um, who we identified very quickly as Rob Stark from Game of Thrones. Oh, I knew that. I was so excited. Yeah, and uh, hence the whole Game of Thrones discussion gets started. Ah. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, basically, um, Cinderella is mother of lizards, and she claims the gold throne at the end of the movie. Spoilers. <laughs> as if you didn't know what happened in Cinderella. If you don't know what happened in Cinderella, then I don't know what to tell you. You're watching a movie podcast. Um, <laughs> but uh, Helena Bottom Carter was really good for her brief time as the uh, fairy godmother. I believe she also narrated the film. It sounded like her voice, uh, which is good. And just chewed the scenery almost literally to a point. Uh, It was very, very fun. Um, No songs. I was kind of surprised about that. No music at all? Uh, There's music. There's music. Um, Like Cinderella has a little ditty that she kind of sings to herself, but no established musical numbers like i thought they would at least do bippity boppity boo nope that's interesting that's different yeah that's a different spin for uh disney but uh it was actually really good and uh stellan skarsgård is actually he's he kind of steals the movie a little bit he plays um like the uh the king's royal advisor very 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 well like he almost nips the whole plot in the bud which is great it was unexpected like someone from not only uh the stepmother doesn't want cinderella to be happy but someone on the the prince's side doesn't want him to find cinderella which is nice it's a good little uh dichotomy yeah that's interesting um ashley and, what and did we you referred to him as lord baelish so <laughs> to um uh, keep up with my movie challenge. I finished Short Circuit and yes. Short Circuit Two. Yes, Mike. Yes, we have to talk about Alien Two and Aliens. Oh, they're the same movie. Okay, they're the same movie with a better director. <laughs> they're no. the same movie so, with a better director okay. and Paul Reiser. Did you enjoy them though? They were fine. They were fine. I, it's not something I would have actively sought out, but I did enjoy them. What? Oh. Um, I learned Sigourney Weaver only has to fight aliens in her underwear. Oh, yeah. nice. But she looks good doing it, I'm just saying. Well, just I mean, throwing it's it out Sigourney there. Weaver in the 80s, obviously. It works. Um, yeah, she could probably still do it. She still looks good. Uh, That's true. So, Short Circuit, I liked. I think he's adorable. I want one. The second uh-huh. one, just no. Did not sit well with me at all. <laughs> I don't know why I wasted my time and money watching it. I'm just, it was so unbelievably boring. It was painful. You, you didn't like forced. Michael McKeon? Man. Was that? You didn't like Michael McKeon? No. <laughs> you didn't like Los Locos kick your ass. Okay, I, did, I remember that part. I, I did remember you guys talking about that before, and I had no idea what you were talking about. And now I get it. Now I get the reference. I like that part. That's my favorite part in the movie. I, I really, I'm just saying. But yes. the rest of it, nah. I don't see why they had to make a sequel. I think it was very poorly done. <laughs> I don't know. But, the first one, adorable. Yes. I mean, he didn't want to be disassembled. Mm-hmm. No disassemble. No, no disassemble. disassemble. Stephanie. Um, now, do you see why I draw the parallels to Chappie? I, yeah, I enjoyed Chappie <laughs> a lot more. I'm just saying. Okay. I, I still enjoy Short Circuit. <laughs> more, but that's, 
that yeah, that I mean, made maybe me from a childlike watched, innocence. I was just gonna say. I mean, watching it now, it, it's yeah. I, I'm. I think I'm gonna cater more toward the the newer version if you want to consider Chappie the newer version. But yeah, I'm sure when it came out as a kid, I mean, when it came out in the 80s, I would have loved it if I had seen it back then. I would have adored it. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. But we need to get you liking We need to get you to see Prometheus next. Oh, he's uh, probably not going to like that. Uh, he's he's not yeah. going to like that. <laughs> I know, Mike. All right. Dang. That was, that was a tough swallow for a lot of people. I mean, I, I liked it. I, I, I liked it. I love it. I, 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 I didn't have much expectation going into it. I did. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, so, so many, Sorg, so many unnecessary deaths in Prometheus. Sorg, would I not like it because awesome of deaths. my ability to enjoy things with logic? Oh yes, right, right. No, that's a problem. <laughs> okay. I had a feeling. I, I, I was like, in the dark based on the previews. I the, 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 it, yeah, the thing is, you'll be sitting there and be like, "Why did they do that?" <laughs> <laughs> What? If I you, mean, Mike, it's Mike, enough. I know you. It's bad you... enough in Alien and Aliens too. They tried to save the cat or the little kid the whole <laughs> time. I'm the, like, no. Some die. sacrifices have to be made. That cat is an asshole. He keeps oh. running away from you. Cat's no, the done. cat is an animal. It's like a dog. You can't kill off the animal. It's true. No, no, because kids, a dog will animals. follow you. Cats are just dicks. I think I think kids over animals. <laughs> okay, kids the kid animals. is a bit more understandable, but still, the kid was kind of an idiot. <laughs> wow. Sword, what wow. did you watch? Wow. Uh Kimmy Smith for one thing. Um and uh Wow, I think that's about it. Uh, I, I, uh Unbreakable. Was... They alive, damn it. Love that show. <laughs> yeah, that that's infectious after a while. Yeah, that, I was I was gonna say that. That's one of the best intros I've seen in a while. It was shot well and it's very catchy. Yes, yes. Um, and apparently, the hula hooping girl from the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt intro is also the same hula hooping girl from the Americans intro. Which those that's... are two. Very <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What is this? Like stock footage or something? Yeah. Oh, that's it's amazing. Stock footage, but those are two very different. There's shows. a start. There's a Shutterstock t- tag in the end of uh, both of those shows. I bet. Although part of me wants to see a uh, crossover between uh, Kimmy Schmidt and Broad City. I was hoping you were going to say the Americans because that would have been really awkward. No, no, I want to see Broad Schmitty. That's what I want to say. <laughs> that would be that would be like so. That would be like the worst of New York against like the just raw innocence. But I think they would get along really well. <laughs> I think they would all get along really well. Oh man, I don't even remember the last episode of Broad City I watched, but every episode is no. I, f- I finished the season. Yeah, but it's that's an amazing series. It's a show oh. I can watch whenever, and that's okay. And when it randomly comes up on Hulu, yeah, yeah, like, I, I don't need to go watch through every one of them. You know, it, it, it's kind of cool. For but me. You, but you do need to watch through every one of them. Because <laughs> it's all I guess so. They're really really good. I guess so. All right. Uh, so this will not be politically correct. I am sorry. My <laughs> wife and I were going to go see the Mexican running movie, and instead we went to see the Duff. Wait, Mexican running movie? <laughs> what Mexican running movie? What are you <laughs> what talking about? What is happening? Is, the is there cool a, running a, through track and field? <gasps> it's a it's a Disney it's a Disney feel good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with Kevin McFarlane. Costner. Yeah, McFarlane. Yeah, oh. McFarlane. They said that's excellent. They said it's good. Yeah. I wasn't going to sit through that. I needed some uh, more drama than I just want to hug myself after a movie. You need, <laughs> so the you needed more drama and you went to the Duff? And we went to the Duff. And I will just say the Duff is, is pretty funny. Uh, if you like those cheesy 90s, uh, it's all that and all those kind of movies, this was just that updated. Yeah, um, it wasn't bad. It was not bad. Yeah. And uh, I did like... Uh, What's her May Whitman? Yeah, um, she she's an awesome character. My wife liked her from that fairy crazy Parenthood TV show, uh, but I also realized she was in. Um, oh, I can't remember. She was one of the villains in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim, which I thought was pretty freaking awesome. And also, the guy in that is uh, Robbie Amell, who's uh, Firestorm on the Flash. Ah, mm. there you go. 
Um, but yeah, that's a that's a good watch. Uh, ben, Mike, real quick, uh, for yes. the movie that you saw, Cinderella, mm-hmm. what what's your quick uh, your your quick rating for that? Is that five dollar? Is that oh that absolutely? Is that uh, pay full price. Pay full, full price. price. Especially if you have kids. Um, I saw it a matinee just because I went to see it with a friend and her two-year-old. Uh, but definitely, it, I would have paid full price for it. I loved it. It was really good. Yeah, the Duff, uh, the Duff is still in theaters. I'd go see it as a matinee. Um, it's good, but yeah, if you want to save some money, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, so, blah, 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 blah. so with that, where can we find people? Um, oh, I say you gotta <laughs> toss it to somebody. Uh, you can find yeah, everything at Sor- SorgatronMedia.com is where a lot of my once. creations are. Sorgatron.com is my bloggy blog. I have Sorgatron on the Twitter as well. Uh, we have a Yik Yak video that we filmed down here in the studio. Uh, the Yik Yak Eulogy. Farewell, our good social media friend. Um, we got crying from our friends in the studio here. Uh, we, we will miss you. And you can check out our video on that. And of course, Sawtooth Willie, episode five, about his underground friends. Please go check that out, too, to learn how you, too, can make friends with underground cats and pigeons. Nice. What about you, uh, Mad Mike? Well, you can find me at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter machines. Uh, you can also find me on the Wrestling Mayhem Show on this very fine network tonight at around 9 o'clock, where I say a lot more curse words and talk about wrestling. And also, <laughs> you can check out Panel Riot if you like to hear my opinions about movies, especially mm-hmm. bad movies. This week I am on Panel Riot with our own DJ Lunchbox talking about Blade Trinity. And oh man, is it awful. <laughs> You're we're gonna hater. fight. We're gonna fight. <laughs> no, it's we're gonna awful. movie fight. Oh man. Uh, what about you, Ashley? You can find me on Twitter at don't mace with me. <laughs> Simple and straightforward. I, I love that handle. I do too. <laughs> and Wango's moving his mic all over the place. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? We all hear you. Oh, I'm... Okay. Uh, so yes, <laughs> Ashley. You can also find Ashley on. Uh, what's that other show that we do? The Round Table. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I mean, Malenga. <laughs> oh, yes. I can be. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think the next movie that we will be reviewing, um, hopefully, is with uh, Ju- uh, Julie Sokolo. She did a documentary called uh, Aspie Seeks Love. Uh, so that, it's a really cool uh, trailer, and um, if you if you want to go check that trailer out. And hopefully, uh, maybe in the next two weeks, we will get to sit down with her and review that movie in a positive way. Uh, you can also find me at Rambling Mango. Uh, that is my Twitter handle. Yeah, handle. Wow. <laughs> All kinds of clear words coming out of my mouth tonight. Uh, you can also check us out on our Facebook group page, The Rambling Movie Minute where we like to throw up random questions, anything that we see on the internet related to movies and fun stuff. Uh, yes. And also uh, check out later on, I will be posting the show, uh, the links to everything that we talked about on our page. So you can go there and anything we talked about, you can click on it and read about it yourself. Uh, but yes, with that, I'm going to call this a wrap. With that, uh, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. And until next weekend, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. A Rambling Movie Weekend. Hold the brakes, guys! We have a confirmation. Malengo. Yes. The best song on Frozen is In Summer. And that's still an incorrect statement, but a correct identification (laughs) of a song. Because... In Summer is a very good song. It is the third best song in the movie. <laughs> third. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm oh, done. Third. We'll see so, you guys next week. I'm out Just of here. let it go, Malenga. Let it go. Let it go. I can't sing anymore. Because we'll get I'm sued. Vomiting. We'll get sued. <laughs>